extension on top of it. Unfortunately, the way that they implemented it requires uh, weird to do weird things sometimes. So we have three different possible topologies for Wi-Fi display support, which is one is Wi-Fi using Wi-Fi direct peer-to-peer -peer connections. So we have um, you are you are can you can connect with your laptop to the normal AP, AP and at the same time scan for surrounding Wi-Fi direct devices, and they announce themselves using. Wi-Fi beacon frames, actually, Wi-Fi frames. And in these Wi-Fi frames, we have certain more information embedded into them using Wi-Fi display-specific uh, descriptors. The other method is uh, DDLS. In that case, both devices, the source and the sync, are connected to an access point. And then, as you have already in connection through the access point, what you can then do is create establish direct connection to through TDLS. The advantage of that is that it's zero setup basically because you just connect to the AP in the lecture hall or wherever you are, and then you can start using it in theory. And in practice, because of TDLS, rather than sending the frames to the access point and then forwarding it to the device, we can actually send them directly to the device. The nice thing about TDLS is that it basically can happen um, on the fly automatically without you even noticing. So the kernel or the Wi-Fi card can say, and this, as far as I know this works, I haven't actually tested it myself, but if, once, if you have such a connection and you're transferring a lot of data, the Wi-Fi driver or Wi-Fi card will say, okay, we should create a direct connection between these two devices, and then it will go into user space, it will tell WPA supplicant to set up a connection and then the keys are exchanged through that method, and you have a connection without the user even noticing. So that's like the ideal use case for us, really. And the third option is infrastructure setup, which is exactly the thing that we forward it through the access point, uh, or even through the network or something like that. So the interesting thing is that the discovery obviously needs to be different. So for TDLS and infrastructure, you are connected to the same access point, so what is being used by this revision two standard it, there is that you broadcast the fact that you are uh, uh, that it exists using multicast DNS, which is easily readily available for us using Avahians and infrastructure like that. The interesting part is supporting peer-to-peer -peer devices, Wi-Fi devices, um, as those need to. We need to discover them. We need to connect through them. Um, you, I don't know if you probably haven't heard about Wi-Fi Direct and how it works. So in Wi-Fi Direct, you start, you start on a, you create a new connection with the device, and then one of the devices becomes the group owner. The other device becomes the peer-to-peer. Uh, -peer, I think it's called device, actually. And then uh, you have this session established which means that you first need to discover everything through Wi-Fi frames, and that is where the Wi-Fi the wi display standard comes in and defines frames, uh, additional data that is attached to the beacon frames and everything else, all the connection frames. So in, those, in that case, if we're using peer-to-peer -peer Wi-Fi, we actually need to set up the information with the WPA supplicant and pass it some Wi-Fi descriptors, which are then included in all the different frame types where the Wi-Fi display specification requires them. This is actually code in WPA supplicant, which already exists specifically to support Wi-Fi display, because it's an extension of the peer-to-peer um, -peer standard, basically. Uh, so, and yeah, multicast DNS is obviously relatively simple in, in theory, but then you can also see a device through both methods. So you would, you, we will need to deduplicate the list in the end so that it all wor works fine. Um, the other thing is that the Miracast standard is kind of weird in places, like uh, RTSP. I'm not sure if anyone knows about it. So RTSP is a streaming protocol. You connect to the server, you request the stream, and you, you query the information, you, requ uh, you request then the stream to start, and it will start streaming. But with Wi-Fi Direct and peer-to-peer -peer setup, what happens actually is you first 
establish the peer-to-peer -peer connection, then in the Wi-Fi frame that uh, the source broadcasts, it says, okay, this is my port that you need to connect to, and then the Wi-Fi device magically connects, connects to the correct RTSP port, and it then will uh, just, it simply connects, it doesn't start querying data, um, but it's, so it's the wrong way around, kind of. So what happens then is that the source, the, the sync connects to the source, the source sends, queries the sync for information, and then um, it keeps going like that, but the, generally the source will, is, will do the first step for everything. So to start a stream, what happens is that the source tells the sync, please start a stream. It sends a specific message for that, and then it comes back. Now, the interesting thing is that we do have a miracle, we already have an open source implementation for all this, which is MiracleCast, which exists, which works both for the sync and source side. In this case, for GNOME, we are obviously only interested in the source side, really. Um, but the trouble is that, so MiracleCast has its own streaming server using uh, our own RTSP server exactly because of those weirdnesses in the protocols. They actually implement an own RT RTSP server. Um, it then uses GStreamer to just grab your X11 display. We all need to use Pipewire, obviously. Um, and then because of all the peer-to-peer -peer setup stuff, it actually needs to manage your Wi-Fi itself. And this is the major issue with miracle cast right now because it means that you cannot use network manager at the same time. So you can only be offline and connect to the device or you need to, uh, you, yeah, basically you need to disable network manager to make it work and even then it's a pain, unfortunately, because um, you need to, it's all split up into multiple applications. You need to create the peer-to-peer -peer connection and then you need to start this screen thing. Um, to be honest, I didn't actually manage to, to get that to work myself. I, gave, I simply gave up and tried to write a Python script which actually started to work. So um, I did write a proof of concept for a Python script uh, using Python to stream to, uh, to, to a Miracast device. This is actually working for one of the two devices that I have. Interestingly, the other one doesn't like my uh, the, the stream that I'm generating, like it just cuts off at some point. It requests frame, it requests uh, re full refresh frames, and then it just breaks up the connection after a short time. But the other, uh, but the other stick that I have actually works. Unfortunately, I'm not able to show it because one, I need to patch the streamer and the version that I have right now is not patched locally. And the other thing is that uh, I forgot the device <laughs> at CBTS, <laughs> unfortunately. So um, it actually works. Like I can stream a test image. The Python script that I wrote, what I did there to be able to coexist with Network Manager was as Network Manager does not care about Wi-Fi Direct at all. It, um, I can just simply bypass Network Manager and directly talk to to WPA supplicant through Dbus by changing the policies. For, for, and so that works. Uh, I did use GStream RTSP server, which was a bit ugly because uh, of the weird things that Wi-Fi Direct is expecting with regard to the messages, who, as the first message, message needs to be sent by the source after connecting, you need to do some setup stuff to just send out the message and then just send out those things and then modify the responses. It does work. It can be made to work even with the GStreamer stuff, uh, RTSP server, with uh, some small modifications to the server code and some bug fixes to the bindings. Um, so that works in principle, but obviously, we would need to still integrate that properly into the desktop, which means that we need network manager support for the peer-to-peer -peer connection. So uh, the, plan, the plan is I'm, I'm working on this currently. I'm not finished yet. 
So what the plan is that we will have a new Wi-Fi direct Wi-Fi direct device type in Network Manager, which will then allow you to scan for devices, which will allow you to set the Wi-Fi IE uh, IEs the descriptors for Wi-Fi direct. Uh, sorry, for Wi-Fi display, um, so that the discovery works fine. And then when once you are starting a connection, you need to manage all the things because. When you're the group, group owner rather than the client, you need to advertise the DHCP server and share your internet connection to the device. Otherwise, you need to connect, receive an IP address from the device. But all this is relatively simple in theory because Network Manager already supports sharing of their connection and everything. So that works. Oh. <laughs> I can show some images, but I don't have much more. Let's try this. Maybe just as a, as a demonstration, this is directly from the specification, and you can see the different uh, layers. So we have Wi-Fi peer-to-peer or GDLS infrastructure and Wi-Fi protected setup at the bottom. And then uh, this is this is the uh, discovery happens through either through the peer Wi-Fi peer-to-peer or through uh, multicast DNS on the IP layer. Those are two different separate discovery mechanisms. And then you have the control stream RTSP on on over TCP, TCP which uh, is used for all the different setup configuration things, like clearing the size of the monitor that is attached to it, um, the different codecs that are supported, all that kind of stuff. Then uh, you can use TCP, another, you can do remote I2C commands to the monitor if that is supported by the stick, which means that you can, this is the protocol for, for the monitor, so you could like change the brightness if you wanted of the monitor in theory, I think. Uh, I don't think that's very interesting for us. There is another input channel for, for receiving uh, commands back. I'm not sure if that is used by anything. I haven't seen a device that actually uses it. Um, and then we have the video stream and encryption layers with HTTP 2.x and all the other packetization and stuff like that. What's not visible here is that actually it's a, the RTP stream can be sent over TCP and UDP with the newer standards and you can switch over but the devices need to support both, so you can just stream one of them in the end. Right. Um, right. So once we have the network manager stuff in place, we can then create, then it will, should be relatively simple to create a user interface. Uh, I'm not sure what that will look like. We have, I haven't talked to the designers yet about exactly about that, how we are going to integrate it into GNOME Shell. Uh, as the setup, will, it's kind of like an external monitor, but then it's not. And you probably want some screen sharing feature. Quite likely, uh, as a start, for example, a GNOME Shell extension would make sense. And then do the discovery there, show you the screens, and then just give the user the option to stream everything to a remote device. And in that case, once we have the UI, we should also be able to extend it to maybe support Chromecast in the future which is a different protocol specific to Chromecast. As far as I know, Chromecast is implemented by VLC, so we should be able to support that there. Um, right. Let me just think. Do you have questions? Yes. That's a good question. Um, I'm not sure it makes sense, to be honest. Because you'll want to, you'll want to connect to a new, um, you won't be connecting to the same device all the time, right? So you want to connect to, a, like, start the screen sharing feature, and then it should pop up. I guess one could integrate it into the display panel or something like that, or do a screen sharing there. Yeah. 
So in general, my plan would be to use the pipe wire features to grab the screen content, which I'm, I'm not sure we have support for adding a second monitor like that. Okay, I haven't heard about that work yet. That would be very interesting in this case, yes. I have, so if that works, that would be cool because then we could just create a virtual display basically. And in that case, we would obviously want to integrate it into the display panel in some sort to allow uh, sharing the display there and then popping up the dialog to select the device to stream to. And then you could create a secondary screen which is fully configurable. That would be ni very nice. Uh, do you know who I could talk to about that? Okay. Yeah, those. Yeah. So if I have heard about the display thing, uh, display link thing with the user space blob, but we would probably need something that's specific to Matter, I would assume. I, I imagine two different ways, right? Either we go through the kernel there and create a virtual monitor, and then this is just, just norm, a normal monitor for Matter, or we implement it directly in the compositor and cr simulate a screen on that in that uh, only in matter and then push that out through pipe wire. Those two mechanisms are possible in general. Yeah, that would be nice. Uh, I expect that first of all we just do screen sharing. So for the internal screen that you already have, primary screen. For that, you would need to implement the sync side, which actually works in MiracleCast, in theory. So, um, like MiracleCast, I think there is a Raspberry Pi image which does work. Uh, I haven't tried it, but so far, as far as I know, you can actually use the Raspberry Pi as a MiracleCast uh, sync. So, if you had that, then you could use the screen towards to your Raspberry Pi, for example, using fully open source solutions. Yes. So, what if you uh, were playing a full screen video? You probably wouldn't want to reencode that content. So, time, right? yes. So, um, the revision two standard actually allows you to broad stream a different, like an unencoded stream over. You can query the information, and then you could do that exactly that. I'm not sure how we could actually implement that from the users space side of view if you had like, if we were exporting your screen and then you are running Totem in full and hitting the full screen button and then in that moment we would need to switch over. I don't think we try to solve it in a generic fashion that would be really difficult, but like we have Totem. Well, yes, that is the alternative. That for Totem, that what we do is we split out the, uh, the dialogue to select the target into a library and then, well, the, be horribly be like pipe wire source, right? So you basically just start up the UI for screen sharing, you give it the pipe wire source that you want to be fed into it, and then Totem provides a pipe wire source of its own. But then it would still be re-encoding quite likely. Um, I'm not sure how, if we can get around that at that point. We would need a lot more support to, to allow streaming, querying the information that which codecs are supported and then disabling re-encoding that re-encoding that case, which would be very, very neat, I agree, <laughs> but it's. Yes, technically that should be possible. In, uh, in practice it will also mean, uh, we'll need to implement a lot more of the Wi-Fi display specification with regard to switching streams and then sending an auxiliary data stream 
which includes the video data, uh, that the non-re-encoded video data instead of the normal MPEG stream that would be coming through, which is open, yeah, H.264 encoded. I think that would be nice to have, but to be honest, I don't think it's um, feasible for us to implement at this point. Even though the use case, yeah, it's probably quite a common use case. And then for Chromecast, for example, I, as far as I know, it works by uploading application, like a small ap application to the Chromecast, and then you can stream to it. And in that case, any codec that's supported by Chromecast would probably easily be supported as long as we get the discovery working and stuff like that. Yes. Yeah. Right. So, hmm? um, I think the question is: Shouldn't we first do the for, um, for use Pipewire to stream um, the actual screen content rather than going doing that? Uh, for example, on, on the network manager part, which I've been doing. So, in general, I think that that should be very relatively simple because we just need a Pipewire. Oh, sorry. Uh, we just need a pipe wire sync, create a pipe wire sync rather than uh, using a test image or grabbing the X11 image. So it's basically just a bit of uh, GStreamer pipeline magic. I understand that we can understand the player and use DLC if you Me neither right now, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, the yeah both both things need to be done, and I think both things are viable. While I would say that the network manager part is actually the larger part of the all, because it requires adding quite a bit of like a new device type. We need a new device type. We need new connection type. We um, I'm intending to add some connection management so that if your streaming server dies, then Network Manager will automatically shut down the peer-to-peer -peer connection so it doesn't linger around, and then you try to establish a new connection and things break. Um, all kind of the, all, all that stuff, and that we need a good basis there on, on the Network Manager side, and then the streaming side should be possible with PipeWire, and I think the. I guess the um, hardest part there will probably be that we will want to support switching the resolution on the fly, for example, which requires then all the implementation on the Wi-Fi direct side again to send the correct commands to devices and then figure out and test this for different devices to, to check that it's working. Um, the other issue is supporting, actually trying to support all the devices. I mean, I have one device and I've been poking it for a while trying to figure out why it doesn't like the MPEG TS stream that I'm sending to it, and I simply couldn't figure it out so far. And the Wi-Fi display specification is interesting in the regard, like they are, seem to be specifying specific IDs for the RTP stream to be used. And I've been trying to patch GStreamer to use those specific IDs rather than other art-coded ones, and it just didn't change anything so far. The device just doesn't like the the stream for some reason, the video stream, and I don't know why. So if someone is here with MPEG TS knowledge, who might know, <laughs> all right. <laughs> I know that uh, DLC uh, plays better than our uh, custom uh, player, so uh, people know streaming in this mm -hmm. uh,
Great. <coughs> okay. Anything else, sir? Okay, then I'm done for now. We can talk later, obviously. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you.